If you want to dance, if you want to sing, man, let the Holy Ghost come upon you this morning. Amen? Because I am unashamed this morning. And um, we know last week was the week of Pentecost, so I'm going to be preaching out of Acts chapter 2. I didn't get to preach on the week of Pentecost, so this is my turn. Come on, somebody. Can I get a crack at this thing? Amen? And I'm going to teach a little bit because um, I see this portion of Scripture in Acts chapter 2. And at the end of the portion of Scripture, it says, And 3,000 believers were added to the body of Christ. Come on, somebody. How many like to win souls for Jesus? How many say, man, I just want to build the kingdom of God, right? I just want to be a part if I'm serving in the, in the building of the kingdom of God, if I'm cleaning toilets, if I'm the usher, it doesn't matter. You're building the kingdom of God. We're building it together, right? How many want to do that? That's what I live for. I tell, I tell our disciples all the time, like, we're here to build the kingdom of God and take the world for Jesus. And so I believe that at the end of this portion of scripture, it says that the, the body was, had growth. And I believe that the keys to that is in Acts chapter 2 all throughout it. So let's, let's talk about it. Amen. It says on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly. suddenly. There was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house. Everybody say house. house. It filled the house. See, I believe right here is one of the keys to the body of Christ growing and going to a different level. I believe that God not only wants to fill churches, but I believe the presence of God wants to fill houses. See, a lot of times in church and in the kingdom, we have it backwards. A lot of times when you come to church, pastors and leaders, we got to kind of cheerlead you into worship. Come on, somebody. Right? Well, I, I'm just, I just didn't feel the anointing on the worship team this morning, brother. But maybe you would feel the anointing if you opened your mouth and you begin to partake. Come on, somebody. Right? I, I, you know what I mean? And, and, and so I believe that sometimes it's like we, we go throughout our week without the presence of God. Right, Pastor? Sometimes we go throughout the week without the presence of God and then you come to Sunday and you expect that to just be your fix-up. Am I preaching to anybody today? Right? And, 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 then, and then you go throughout the week again, and then you go through it, and then we're here, and we kind of revive you, and, and God does a work in your life. And that's amazing. I think we have that part right in the church. I think you can go to a lot of churches, you feel the presence of God. But I think this is where we struggle in the body of Christ, is at home we're not being filled with the presence of God. At home, we're not taking the move of God from the house of God to our home and beginning to fill our homes. Come on, somebody. And, and we need the anointing in our homes just as much as we do in the church. I, I don't know about you men in this place, men of God. I need the anointing to be a husband just as much as I do to preach this morning. See, see I'm a firm believer that the Holy Ghost doesn't just raise up great preachers. I'm a firm believer that the Holy Ghost doesn't just raise up great preachers, but the Holy Ghost raises up great husbands. You can preach your lights out, but if you go home and you're mean to your wife, I don't want to hear it. Oh, I brought my steel toe boots this morning. You better just put your feet under the seat. Come on, somebody. See, I believe that the Holy Spirit doesn't just raise up good worship leaders. I believe he raises up amazing women and men of God with character that live this thing out. See, the Holy Ghost doesn't just transform me on Sunday morning. The Holy Ghost transforms my Monday. The Holy Ghost transforms my Tuesday. The Holy Ghost transforms my Wednesday. I'm different on Thursday. Can I get an amen? amen. We need to take it home. We need to take it home with us. The move of God has to go home with us. Amen? Amen. And then it says, see, that's the first key is, is we need to take this home. Revive, we talk about revival, revival. What about revive home? How about we do that? How about we revive home? And then when you come to the house of God, instead of this attitude of, well, let's see what, let's see what they have to offer this week. Right? You, you, you come with an open heart and let's see what I have to offer this week. See, see, we need to move past, bless me, bless me, pastor, to how can I be a blessing, pastor? How can I serve the vision of this house, pastor? How can I get involved? How can I do something for God? I want to serve, I want to serve, I want to serve. 
This is how this is how the body of Christ in the early churches made advances in the kingdom. It is there was a people that were willing and available, and I'm afraid sometimes we've turned this into fast food, drive through buffet let me pick what i want here I, I i like when pastor preaches on the love of god but then when he starts preaching on sin i'm kind of like i don't want to go there no more okay all right all right take a deep breath we're gonna get there all right revive home my wife keeps me accountable with this amen i have a puerto rican wife so she'll speak up Soon as I got an attitude with her, she's like, you know, the Bible says your, your prayers are going to be hindered. <laughs> the husbands are mad at me like, why'd you give them that one? <laughs> right? She'll even call me brother. You know, your prayers are going to be hindered, brother. <laughs> I love you, babe. I'm like, I'm not your brother. I'm your husband. <laughs> right? So we, we, need, we need to be transformed from the inside out. That, that, that's what the book of Acts looked like. See, I wonder sometimes when we compare our lives to the book of Acts, if we really are living like the church. Because that's what it looked like. It was an everyday thing. It, it began to change their houses. It began to change their families. The, the, you know, this isn't just check a box one time a week. And I'm challenging you guys to go to the next level because that's how this city will be transformed. Let me tell you something. The devil's putting in work seven days a week in Yakima. I can't wake up like I ain't finna go to church today. The devil don't wake up like I ain't finna go to work today. Can I rap? Can I rap? Is it okay? I was actually supposed to rap before I came up here. We forgot. It's all right. We'll rap. We'll do it at the end, hopefully. The devil's putting in work seven days a week. He's working overtime. You think, you think two or three hours on, on one day of the week is going to do it? We need to take this home with us. Amen? So I, lo I love that it started in the house. I love when the Holy Ghost fell. It started in the house. Amen? We got that one? Yeah. Then it says, it fell like a mighty windstorm where they were sitting. Come on, somebody. Tell the person next to you, sit down. They're like, they're like I'm already sitting down, brother. No, no, no. No, no, sit down. And when I say sit down, it says that the Holy Spirit fell where they were sitting. The, the sitting is, an, is a place of rest in the presence of God. And, and sometimes I'm guilty of this. We can become so busy. Hello. We are so distracted. Broken focus. Facebook. Hello. I call it flesh book. Right? Maybe it's called TikTok. Because it's taking all of your time. Okay. I just preached to some 12-year-olds right now. Right? That's going to break some chains this morning, right? And, and, and we are so distracted that, that, you know, we've lost a lot of times. At least I could speak for my generation. We've lost the art of sitting down in the presence of God and saying, Lord, until you show up. Lord, until I feel a breakthrough in, come on, breakthrough church. Am I at breakthrough church this morning? Did I read? Is, it, is this where we're at this morning? See, sometimes you don't break through, come on, somebody, until you wait on the Lord. You, you can't be such a busy body that you skip first base. Come on, somebody. There, there's, there's, there's a story that, that uh, Billy Graham uh, preaches about, and, and it's about this, this baseball player. He hits a home run in the, in the ninth inning. And, and they, were down by, they were down by some points, and he hits his home run. And the, and the guy runs around the bases, and they think they won the game. And, and, and his teammates are at home base waiting to celebrate him because they won. They won. And as he rounds all the bases, he comes home. Tell the person next to you, don't skip first base. What's first, what's first base? The presence of God. I, I, I can't preach this morning until I get in the presence of God. We, 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 it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And, and we can try to be good husbands. We can try to be good fathers and, and mothers. But until we get into the presence of the Lord, I don't know about you, but I got nothing good to offer. And, and, and he rounds third base and he finally comes home. And right when he comes home, the umpire calls him out. You're out. And everybody's going crazy. What? He just hit a home run. And the umpire said, you forgot to touch first base. I have been guilty of this family. 
preaching, ministering, get busy, routine, church, and I forget sometimes to touch first base the presence of the Lord. Lord, you transform me. God, I can't pour out until you pour in, God. God, I, I need your Holy Spirit to transform my life. I can't skip that step. The church, especially in this time, when days are darker than ever before, tragedies are happening, the devil is flooding this generation with depression. We cannot afford to move without the presence of God. Right, Pastor? That's why I love this church. We can't afford to move without the presence of God. We, we could have the nice lights, right? We, we could have the stage. We could have, we could have the strategies, and we could have the board meetings. But I believe we need more prayer meetings than board meetings. Okay, come on, somebody. Tell the person next to you, learn to rest in the presence of God. They were sitting in the presence of God. Amen? Then it says... What looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. But are you present this morning? Because we could be here but not be here. It says everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time... This is, this is, this is an important part. There were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. Ooh, this is deep. This is deep. Don't just glance over this. Come on, tell the person next to you, this is deep. Come on, somebody. This is, this is some sweet, this is the word of God, sweeter than a minor shake right now, all right? This is honeycomb. This is, this is beautiful right here. It says they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers, both Jews and converts and Judaism, uh, uh, Arabs, and we all hear these people speaking their own, our own languages about what God has done, the wonderful things God has done. See, the, the, another thing that grows the church is prophetic preaching. When we come under the unction of the Holy Ghost, somebody could walk in from a di different culture than I am. Somebody can walk in and I don't know what they're struggling with. They can walk in depressed. They can walk in broken. But if I'm under the unction of the Holy Ghost, like the book of Acts, I will begin to open my mouth and prophetic preaching will take place and the Holy Spirit would touch them right where they're at. What's the application of this? I believe that Sometimes we can, sometimes we can become, we, we can forget to hear the voice of God and what he's saying, a rhema word, an on-time word. I, I loved watching your, your preaching last week, Pastor, because he was talking about um, horoscopes. He was talking, he, you were just stomping on the devil in your sermon. He was talking about horoscopes. He was talking about false doctrines in the church. He was talking about how people believe everybody's saved and how that's a lie from the end. You guys better thank God for a pastor that stands on truth. See, that was an on-time word. That was a prophetic utterance because the Holy Spirit is giving you the words to speak. And we need, if we're going to grow the church, we, we don't just need five points, two songs, and God bless you, brother. I, I believe every church, I believe, needs to be a move of God. No, no, I really believe that every church needs to be a move of God, not, not, not just a corporation. You, you might wonder why I'm talking about a lot of these things, but I'm, I, I'm doing something that the Spirit is, is speaking to me to do. Because I travel across the United States, and, and many places it turns into a corporation. A, a business, and, and it works, and it runs, and it functions. But, but Jesus speaks to a church in the book of Revelations, and he says, I know your deeds, and I know that you have a reputation. Tell the person next to you, reputation? He says, I know you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. I know you have a reputation of being, you have the glitch, you have the glamour, but at the core of your church, is there a move of God taking place by the power of the Spirit? Wow. 
Come on, somebody. Prophetic preaching is, is important. Prophetic preaching is important. It says they stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? I, I just want to make sure we're catching this. Revive home, right? We're just going to kind of glance through this. Revive home. The second one was waiting on God in the presence of God, resting. Now we have prophetic preaching, right? That's, that, that, that's something about a prophetic uh, in, spirit in the church. It, that, it was even breaking out last night at the concert. People came in with burdens. People came in with needs. And we had brothers and sisters up here. And we began to minister and say, is there anybody in here that's dealing with this? That's hearing from heaven. Right? And God began to minister to the needs of the people. And then it says this. So, so we got those. It says this. Um, they stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying they're just drunk. Hello. Right? You know you're praising right when people think you're drunk. Right? You ain't praised right until somebody says. Right? You know sister so-and-so? She's crazy, huh? No, she just loves God. You, you know brother so-and-so? I didn't even know he could jump that high. Wow. He looked like Michael Jordan at the altar. Maybe his calling was to play basketball. No, that's the anointing. You know what I mean? You can't do that on basketball court. That's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. But, but they thought they were drunk. There was something so different and, and so exuberant that, that it made people wonder, what, what's going on? How many know we need a church that the, that the city looks into? When they look into Breakthrough Church... They say, what's going on there? What, what's going on there? Come on, somebody. But others in the crowd ridiculed them. They're just drunk. That's all. Then Peter. Oh, I'm going to preach about Peter. How many love Peter? Right? How many, how many feel like you relate with Peter? Right? Cussing Peter. Tripping Peter. Rebuking Jesus Peter. Trying to walk on water, but then he loses sight and he sinks, Peter. <laughs> Cutting people's ears off, Peter. I mean, man, pre-Holy Spirit, Peter has needed some work. Come on, somebody. And, and I love that Jesus chooses Peter and, and, he, and, he, and he says, come follow. Come on, somebody. How many, how, many, how many love, how many just love, love, love that God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise? Am I preaching to somebody? I, I love it because I was, I was that guy. <laughs> and, and, and it says Peter, who, who just a few chapters before this, Peter denies Jesus. He, he denies Jesus. He's ashamed. He has a moment. He has a failure, whatever you want to call it. But it says when they said they were drunk, Peter stepped forward. See, this is the power of the Holy Spirit on a church. We, we go from being a church that, that's maybe shy and, and timid. But when the Holy Spirit falls upon, because this is after the Holy Spirit fell upon Peter. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm a different man when the Holy Spirit comes upon me. Come on, somebody. You're, you're a different woman of God when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And it says, now Peter, the one who was denying Jesus, said, I don't even know the man. It says, Peter, step forward. Tell the person next to you, step forward. There's another version of the Bible that says, Peter lifted his voice. Come on, somebody. I believe there was something in Peter that says, I might have been ashamed before. Come on, I'm going to preach it in this place. I, I might have been ashamed of the name before. Oh, but I got a second chance. And the Holy Spirit is upon me. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power. It makes me bold. It makes me courageous. It makes me believe in what I'm standing for. And I'm able to lift up a shout that I wasn't able to before. I, I want to talk about post-Holy Spirit Peter. I, I call him Pentecostal Peter. See, before he was Pentecostal. <laughs> right? Before Peter was Pentecostal. But he went from Pentecostal to Pentecostal. Right? He had, it, the, the day of Pentecost shifted something in his life. And, 
And I believe, I believe that when Jesus called Peter the unlikely one, that Jesus, he included, that he knew that one day the Holy Spirit was going to come upon Peter. Because before that, you could just look at Peter and be like, what? He doubts? What, what's this about? But Jesus had a secret weapon. He had a secret that nobody knew about. The Holy Spirit says Peter stepped forward. I believe if we want to grow as a church, if we want to take the city for Jesus, if we want to make a difference, I believe we need to be a church that steps forward. We need to be a church that steps forward. That steps. The Bible says David, when everybody was running away from Goliath, you know the Bible says that David ran to the battle. Oh, I'm about to preach to a bold church. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as lions. Everybody else is running away from Goliath, saying he's too big to kill. David says he's too big to miss, and he runs to the battle. Oh, y'all didn't catch that in this place. He's too big for us. He's too big to kill, and, and nah, he's too big to miss. Let me get this rock. Let me get this stone in my sling. And if I have the Spirit of God, he said, you come to me with sword. You come to me with spear. But I come in the name of Jesus. No weapon. That's the power of the Holy Spirit on a people. You guys know Isaiah? You guys, I heard a lot of people talking about my cousin Isaiah Saldivar here, right? My, my cousin Isaiah is a prime example of this because I, I, I was at, with Isaiah the months, just two months before he got saved. And when I say he was the quietest guy, he was the quietest guy to himself. He didn't want to take pictures with nobody. <clears throat> this is when he wasn't saved. And when the Holy Spirit hit his life, he cannot stop preaching. And when I say he preaches, I mean, that boy preaches. Like right now, he wouldn't even take a breath. Come on, somebody. Thank you. Right? You guys see him? He's got his neck veins and everything, right? <laughs> I mean, he preaches. That's the transformation of Jesus. We got to be a people that step forward. Peter said, these people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. <laughs> <laughs> still still got a little little bit of that Peter in them, right? <laughs> Praise God. Tell the person next to you, I'm a work in progress, brother. <laughs> Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. Like like Pastor Kerry said, I don't want no no rock to outpraise me, because one, that's weird. <laughs> that was funny. No, first off, that's weird. Um, no, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Listen, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, like, just, I'm not even going to draw from this. I'm just going to preach it, and you guys should get excited, because that's how powerful this is. He says, I will pour out my spirit upon some people. No, I didn't read that right, huh? I will pour out my spirit upon those that think they're anointed. I will pour out my spirit upon those that have the right church clothes. I will pour out my spirit upon those. No, it says upon all people. Tell the person next to you, you got a chance. You, you have a chance. Drew, you got a chance, bro. Wow. Praise God. I'm always messing with my brother, Drew. That is a miracle, right? I'm just kidding. People like, you, you, know, you know, common people. They, they, this is what the scripture, I, I believe, is saying to us, Pastor. Is a common people like you and I have an extraordinary opportunity in the last days. Maybe there was a time in the kingdom where there was superstar evangelists. Maybe a couple years ago there was people, there was evangelists that were big and everybody flocked to their meetings. But, but the Bible says in the last days, I want to pour out my spirit on this person, all people, common people, white people, black people, all people. You know, you know, God loves to take his super and put it on our natural. And make us supernatural. He loves to take his extra and put it on our ordinary. 
but make us extraordinary. Come on, somebody. Tell the person next to you, God will make you. God, God will make you into something. You, you know, the, the disciples that Jesus called, he, he made them. He made them. He spent time with them, and he, he made them. He, he, you know what's amazing is it would be enough if Jesus just saved me, Pastor. That, that would be enough for me. If he just saved me and left me there, I'd be like, hallelujah, I'm going to heaven. That's enough for me. But the fact that he would not only save us, but then he would say, not only do I want to save you, but I want to use you. And not only do I want to use you, but I want to use you in a mighty way. Not only do I want to do, I want to use you to bring deliverance to your generation. I got an extraordinary plan for your life. I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. And look what it says. Even on my servants. See, I think there's a key there. I, I, think, I think there's a key there to church going to another level. I, I, why, why? I was wondering, I was like, why is that part specifically in there? It could have stopped at, I will pour out my spirit on all people. But it says, in those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my servants. Servants. There's, there's no platform that, that God loves to use better than a servant's heart. You, you make yourself a platform for God to use you when you're a servant. You, you make yourself a platform. You, you, put your, you put yourself in the hands of God and you're a servant and, you, and you're over yourself. You can't be full of God and yourself at the same time. And you just begin to say, I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve. Pastor, what do you need? I'm here to serve. Brother, what do you need? I'm here to serve. I will pour out my spirit even on my servants. That's, that's the other key to, to us going to a different level. How many want to go to a different level? So we got, we're getting this, right? We're getting this. And we can have Brother Drew. You can, you can come up with the, with the strings, play heavenly melodies. Brother Drew, when you guys hear him sing, you'll be like, wow. He's, he hits high notes. And when I say high notes, like high, high notes. <laughs> right? The closer I get to you, <laughs> the more it makes me know. <laughs> We're talking about Jesus, right? The closer we get to Jesus. Come on, Drew. Come on. Praise God. Come on. There's so much, there's so much more in here, but I got to narrow it down. Have you ever read the word of God and you're like, there's so much, Pastor, when you were preaching on, online, when I'd seen it, when I was on my way over here, um, I, I was like, wow, I just got hit with the word of God, like smacked upside the head with like 20 Bible verses right now. That's, that, I like that. That's like, when I leave the house of God and I am fed, and there was some meat there, there's nothing worse than getting a burrito. Have you ever been to Chipotle? Is there a Chipotle out here? Okay, Chipotle, you know what? We're going to rebuke the spirit of Chipotle right now. These things I have against you, Chipotle. You give me a lot of rice. You give me a lot of beans. You give me sour cream. You give me guac. You give me the whole thing. And then when it comes time to put the meat in the burrito... All of a sudden, you back down. And I got three pieces of pollo in my burrito. The devil is a liar. See, but that's how it is when, when we come to the house of God. And there's no meat of the word. God's people leave starving. God's people leave hungry. They, they came in to get filled. I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in services and, and I look around and I see broken people. And I see they came to get filled. And they leave and they walk out. No anointing. Me crying out to God, God, please, Lord. I pray, Lord, over our pastors. I pray over our leaders. This isn't to put people down. This is just me saying, I, and even me, I need the presence of God. 
because you came in with needs and only God can meet those needs. So Peter continues preaching. He says, so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's word, words, there was a lot more that he preached, but I just came down to the bottom because I felt like we got most of the main part that I felt like led to preach this morning. It says, Peter's words pierced their hearts. We need words to go forth from the pulpit. And when I say the pulpit, I'm not just talking about here. Your, your workspace is a pulpit. Listen to me, mothers that are stay-at-home moms. When you wake up in the morning, you're taking care of those babies. That's your mission field. That's your mission field. See, see, I, a lot of people don't know my mom. They don't know who my mom is. They, they don't know who she is, but I've preached around the world. We've done music around the states, and nobody knows that behind closed doors, my mama raised up a warrior. I, I, my, most of what I know, I, I give all glory to God, I know that, but I want to honor her for a second and say that she took her job serious. I mean, we would wake up with anointing oil on our heads. I felt like a piece of fried chicken. A piece of Kentucky fried chicken. How did I wake up greasy and oily? And then I hear the worship music in the next room and I'm like, oh, I know what's going on. My mom was one of those moms that anointed everything. Anoint your shoes. Mess up my shoes. For mothers that don't know, anointing oil messes up Jordans. All right? Anointing oil over everything. Stuck to her convictions when, when I would want to listen to worldly music. You got the wrong house, buddy. Oh, you, you want to listen to that? You can. That's fine. It's not in this house, though. You have to find somewhere else. Go pay rent. Do what you want. Oh, and by the way, on Sunday mornings, it's non-negotiable. We will. Oh, and I'm so glad she did that. Because one day after service after service, man, maybe I didn't get it then, but there came a day where I went to a service. And I got saved. And God touched my life. And I was never the same ever again. So I'm thankful for a family that raised up a standard against the enemy. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. If you want to be a people in this place, we're going to stop right there because the anointing is on this. If you want to be a people in this place that stand on the word of God, stand to your feet with me for a moment. If you want to be a people that stand on the word of God, you say, I want to stand on truth. I want to do what God's called me to do. I want to raise up my children the way that they're called to be raised up. Tired of compromise in my home. I got to take the move of God home with me. I got to revive home. We need the presence of God in our marriage. We need the presence of God in our children's life. We can't have the enemy roaming around here. If that's you right now, just raise your hand. Lift your hands unto the Lord. Right there where you're at. To say, Jesus, come and take control. Take over. This is yours. This is your family. These are your children. This is your home. Say, Jesus, Holy Spirit, have your way in my life. If you got to surrender something to, to God this morning that you've been holding on or that's been holding on to you, right now, right there where you're at, every shackle and every chain be broken right now in Jesus' mighty name. My brother Drew's going to sing a song. He's going to lift up his voice. And as we lift up our voices, I, I, I hope right now that you don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Don't worry about the person next to you. Close your eyes, lift your hands, and surrender to Jesus. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, fall upon your people. 
Holy Spirit, break the yoke of bondage. Holy Spirit. You are here. Holy Spirit. Moving in our midst. Have your way, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, you are here, moving in our midst, hallelujah, I worship you, yeah, I worship you. The Holy Spirit pierce your heart this morning. You are here, let it touch your heart this morning. Working in this place, I worship you, hallelujah. I worship If you want to come up to the altar, the altars are open. You are way make miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, way make miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are, you are, that is who 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 you are. Depression is broken in Jesus' mighty name. If you've been dealing with depression, just come up here to the altar and lift your hands. Every chain of depression be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Anxiety broken in Jesus' name. You are here. Holy Spirit, have your way. Working in this place. Depression broken in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. You Hallelujah. are here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Moving in our Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I worship Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I worship you. Jesus. Oh, you are here working. Jesus. You're working in Holy this Spirit place. Way. I worship you. Oh, Lord, I worship you. Because you are. You are. You are. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are, oh, we make miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Say, that is, that is who you are. 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 Come on, we're gonna revive home this morning. If, if you're a uh, um, if you're a family in here, husband and a wife, if you came together, just lift your hands, or if you want to come up and, and lift them together. And, and, and you know what? We're gonna we're gonna say we're gonna revive home. I I, I am I am here to tell you that I've been, man. I, I'm guilty of this. I, I want to pray with my wife more. I, I want to really pray with her more. I want to I want to get into the Word with my children more. And I need God to revive my home. I need Him to do a new work in my life. If that's you right now, just hold hands with your family, and we're just gonna pray that the Holy Spirit would sweep through your home. And pour out an anointing on your household. Pour out an anointing on your children. A fresh wind of the Holy Spirit that idols would be knocked down. Idols would be knocked down in your home. Some of us, you, you, in your home, you, you spend hours on the television. You, you spend hours maybe on social media. But God wants to bring those idols down today. And say, God, we put you first and foremost. Once again, we put you at the center of our home. 
We put you at the center of our lives, Lord Jesus. So right now, lift your hands and just ask the Lord to revive your children. Ask the Lord to revive your marriage. You say, you know what? We're going to pray together. We're going to fast together. We're going to build the kingdom together. You know what? Throughout the week, we're going to stay in fellowship with Jesus together. We need him every day. We need him every day. Come on, Brother Drew. Sing it up. Hallelujah. 